Hello, 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 victory! First place in the East, baby. Cincinnati is back. Back on top. First time ever in the Eastern Conference in Major League Soccer, but we're back on our perch atop of the table. First time in like, I don't know, 1,300 or 1,600 days, so it's it's an amazing feeling, y'all. Welcome to episode 324, I think of it is, of Cincinnati Soccer Talk. Of course, this is a different voice you're hearing in the host chair tonight. We kicked Boston Razzle Dazzle Brazzle out to Sin City for the weekend. Told him, get out of town, get out of Dodge, recharge your batteries, make some money or donate to some educational fund somewhere in Las Vegas, and we'll have some fun here with the... Uh, what do you call it? The inmates run the asylum. This is Brian Weigel in the host chair tonight. I am joined by a great cast of characters. We got to bring in Nate, the great Nate Gilman. How you doing, big fella? Welcome. Good. Happy to be back. Um, spring is here, uh, at least where I live. Hopefully, where where you are too. Cherry blossom and, blooming. Uh, they they have bloomed and and they are starting to fall off trees. Uh, so that's an interesting interesting experience. Um, so, so now pollen coats the cars. Is that what? Yes. Saying? Yep. A lot of that. Uh, I was driving down uh, in the tidal basin yesterday or uh, on Saturday, and we were getting that that windstorm that was blowing through um, about 24 hours after you guys had it, and it kind of looked like it was snowing. So, uh, but it was 70 degrees here and sunny. I can't complain. Nate's first place in Cincinnati Pollen Talk. So uh, glad to have you back this week. Uh, we got Joshua. Josh, how you doing, big fella? You uh, back for another uh, episode of Punishment here? Yeah, they keep asking me to come back because I keep responding until someone kicks me out. You're not going to have to do with me. <laughs> you, haven't fooled, you haven't realized your mistake yet. No, we love no. having you around. We love all the new voices, and uh, we are glad to have you back, my friend, for a great episode ahead. And of course we got uh, a villain in the house. We got Justin Blair, new job today. He's starting fresh, turn the page in life. Uh, glad to have you as part of CST on a new day for you and your family and your professional career. Yeah, it's, it's been a whirlwind, but I'm uh, super excited about the new opportunity. Uh, uh, obviously, I, I don't know if anybody knows I'm, I'm in manufacturing. So just kind of another uh, gig. But, uh, but yeah, just beat to death, man. I've been out, uh, like Nate said, springs sprung and, uh, the wife sent me out in the yard all week. So, uh, I'm, I'm very, very, uh, exhausted on this one. Well, we, we got you for an hour away from all that, uh, glutton of punishment and working and, uh, all that fun stuff. We're here to talk about some great things. Good vibes only here in Cincinnati land guys. Look at the... You, it's it's amazing. We're in first place. We got, I don't want to say a rival. That's not, you know, that rival, the rivalry terms thrown around way too easy. But we got some uh, frenemy action upcoming this week. First place in the East, FC Cincinnati. We got defending Eastern Conference Championship or er, champion Philadelphia Union coming into TQL City. So it's going to be a fun show. We're going to talk about what's upcoming, what we just had, and, uh, Going to have a, a special guest from Apple Plus, uh, Lori Lindsay, former U.S. Women's National Team player, on here in segment two. So, guys, uh, as Boston loves to say, our best and the worst of this past week. And Justin, we're going to throw it to you. Give us your best and the worst for the week. That was a one nothing win versus Inter Miami. Well, um, the win. Uh, <laughs> it's my first ever at TQL Stadium. It's actually the second win I've ever seen live in person at FC uh, for FC Cincinnati. Uh, I think the last one was a um, New York Red Bulls two matchup in mm. Newport. So it was a complete downpour that day too. So <laughs> this is, <laughs> maybe it's a trend. Maybe I just need to go when it rains. Uh, for the worst, it was kind of uh, the ghost of uh, last year and even going into 2021 where um, we really lacked any kind of control in the uh, midfield. We, what we did was we tried to um, kind of press a little bit too much. I think Pat even mentioned that in his post-game comments. There was a lot of uh, unforced errors, right? Like we're, we're just trying to do too much with the ball instead of just maintaining possession and really putting pressure on that uh, on uh, uh, Inter-Miami. Yeah, it certainly was an interesting, uh, interesting week. Anybody disagree with those comments? 
Yeah, got, I know we got a lot to talk about here. Nate's going to bring us some stats guru here. But, uh, Josh, what was your best and worst for the week? Yeah, uh, my best um, was just watching Yerson Mosqueda just completely – be everything that you we wanted him to be you know i wrote in our thing there your is he is your he's he's like finding your first love in summer camp and it's such great it's everything you want it to be it's new it's exciting it's awesome but then that leads me into my worst is is that you you know summer is going to end someday so it's you got to try to enjoy it while you can. You know, that loan that we have with him with Wolves has an extension through the season. I can't imagine at this point what you've seen from him. Um, it, it's going to, I think you have to extend that. I think, it, I think it's a no brainer, but sure. you know, you know, it's hard to, it's, it's hard to think of this team without his pace um, and his it, just overall excitement. I mean, to see him score and to see him, you know, slapping the badge yeah. and and being as hyped as he possibly could be. Obviously, it was his one of his first you know, his first career goal. So that's obviously got to go into it a little bit. But to, to see his excitement, to see the way he's built a bond with the, with the guys on the pitch, at least just from you know looking at him and looking how looking how they react to him, he's they've embraced him full heartedly, and, it, and it's going to be really tough at the end of the season to, to see him head back and it's great for him, but it, mm-hmm. it'll be hard. If you're not, if you're an FCC fan and you're not going on all the wolves, Twitter and s- Twitter threads and Facebook threads and Reddit threads and just messaging them, he's our son. Now you got to go out and do it. That's, that's your job as an FCC fan, right? <laughs> I think so. Right. I, I, like it's, I don't. I, I mean, at this point, you just gotta root against wolves as much as you possibly can, right? Just hey, sure. like, you know, just wolves. Watch them tank. Hopefully, they get you know in relegation zone and they need money or something. <laughs> Whereas wolves needs an influx of cash, and it's like, okay, well, we can give you some. <laughs> so I'm yeah, just keep that center back. At, at this point, I don't know. It's worse uh, for FCC if if wolves uh, stay up and, and or if they uh, if they drop. So we'll we'll see what happens. But uh, wolves is gonna be interesting. Uh, Nate, what's, uh, what's your best and worst for the week? Yeah. So I think my best is, uh, anybody who has, has caught previous appearances of mine on, on this show or, or, uh, elsewhere on the CSD podcast network or, or read anything I've written, uh, knows that I kind of, uh, tend to be more circumspect, more analytical in how I, how I watch the game. Um, but my best is, uh, the fact that Alvaro Barial, um, hit a Rabona to Sergio Santos, which Don Baji subsequently skied over the post. But just the level of sauce to to do that in stoppage time, in the rain, in just miserable conditions, um, absolutely deserves a shout out. Um, he is so fun. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't I don't think he's he's more fun than Lucho yet. But you know, we might have a battle towards the end of the year. Um, the, he's just you know must watch must watch TV uh, and long may it continue. I think it's being recognized around the league. I mean, he made the bench for team of the week. Yeah. Just for, for having an assist. I mean, I, and, and I don't think he played his best games. Like it was, I would not, I don't know if it was his third or fourth best game of the year. And that's just what he brings to the table every week. Yeah. High quality like, every week. Yeah. National pundits are out there saying that, you know, he might be the best left back in the league, which is, kind of crazy when you think about where we've come from. Um, but he's just so much fun. So that's my best. Uh, my worst is uh, hopefully you're um, removed from Twitter in a way that, that I am not, unfortunately. Uh, but the Apple TV deal uh, and ratings and that sort of thing is, is back in the news. Um, I really don't want to get weighed down into it. So this will be the only time I comment on it. Uh, it's just annoying. Just enjoy the, enjoy the league. Don't, don't care about the financials right now. Um, it looks Apple TV. It looks great on TV. Uh, and you know, hopefully it continues. I'm sure it will. Uh, so, you know, enjoy the, the great quality, um, and the great, great programming that we have. Oh, it, it's been tremendous. And, and I think I said this last week on the show, Nate, I feel like it's come from that little troll factory, which is world soccer talk every week. And they, those guys drive me crazy. They have such a, a megaphone 
and they're not helping anything. So you'll, you'll learn. Uh, I'm not a big fan. Kartik, I've talked to him. He's been on the show, but it is what it is. So, um, uh, guys, uh, k- keep staying tuned. We're going to have, uh, Lori Lindsay of, uh, of Apple, uh, TV coming on here soon to discuss uh, FC Cincinnati and WSL and in Major League Soccer. So uh, stay tuned. She's going to be coming on here in a couple minutes. Uh, my best and the worst for the week. I, I think the best is is just the vibes. Like Coach Noonan was just so disappointed in, in the in the performance of the week, and yet it was another one nothing win. And guys, I know people dog Inter Miami. That's not a bad team. That it's not a bad team. They're not performing to where they need to be yet. There's still talent there. I, I think that number 10 situation is going to have to change. We'll see with uh, about $100 million, uh, see what happens there. But it, Yeah, it might. <laughs> it might change. So, um, But, yeah, I, I really do feel like it was a, a – a, we didn't play very well, um, but those are the, the those were games that we would lose a year ago. And now we're winning. We have the depth. We have Malik Pinto coming on. Oh, uh, being a Wobodos out. You have, um, uh, uh, I want to call him Mascaro. No, uh, Marco uh, coming on. Marco Angulo coming on. So it, it's it's really just a, an amazing roster build that I think is bearing fruit. And it's just budding. budding. We're not fully there yet. So that's awesome to see. Worst for the week? I don't have one because I'm pumped up. We're in first place. And that's all that matters right now. I, I have my family coming in from or, sorry, my wife's family coming in from Germany this week, and I'm taking my brother-in-law, and my two nephews to the game. And I've been talking a big game about FCC, so please back it up, or that'll be my worst for next week. So, all right, guys, some housekeeping business real quick. As you know, Apollo Home is the premium home service provider in Cincinnati. They pride themselves on awesome customer service, expert technicians, and seven-day-a-week service. Next time you need help with plumbing, electrical work, or HVAC service, give them a call. Or you can always schedule service visits online at ApolloHome.com. Guys, it's going to be 80 in Cincinnati this week. Make sure your AC is working just fine for the Easter holiday. So go check them out at ApolloHome.com. All right, guys, it's that special time of the show. We we have We've been blessed with exceptional guests here from... Apple TV. And I, I I put this on Twitter a couple minutes ago when I found out Lori was coming on the show. Guys, we got a U.S. Women's National Team legend, host of Sirius XM Radio, NWSL lead analyst, Apple TV, Lori Lindsay. Thank you so much for coming on to, to be on our program at Cincinnati Soccer Talk. How are you tonight? Yeah, great. Thanks for having me. Good to be chatting with you guys. How are you all doing? Pretty good. First place. Good vibes all around. Good vibes. Yeah, certainly. Here. Certainly. Yeah. So as I just mentioned in, in the lead up, um, you have one crazy schedule right now. You, <laughs> you probably have to be the busiest commentator in the game between NWSL, Major League Soccer, Sirius XMFC played in. Uh, how has 2023 been for you? And uh, how have you been able to stay afloat and prepping for all these matches and, and events you're covering? Yeah, well, 2023 has been great. And I feel incredibly lucky to be working both leagues and as you mentioned, Sirius XM and just, you know, I love this work. So it, it doesn't actually feel like work. It just feels like, hell yeah, I get to watch soccer <laughs> for a living and then talk about it. And so in a bit more of a succinct way, I guess, but because um, it's certainly a craft, but uh, yeah, I've had a great time. And I think in terms of prepping and staying on top of things, there's a lot of synergy between the stuff that I do. And I just, I, in, enjoy both the leagues a ton so obviously I was a player in the NWSL I know that in a different way ins and outs and have followed it and then been a a commentator in it for a bit now and then MLS um while I've called games for ESPN and, and Fox and then in the pandemic I was one of the commentators for uh, Nashville during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've watched it more than a fan. I've dug a bit deeper, uh, but it has been a lot of work just so to do, to understand the league at a level that I want to. Um, so I, I definitely had to take time, but I lean on people that I know in the league, ask questions that think, and I think one of the best things about commentating, at least how I experience is it does feel like being a part of a team. So even though you're going on the road with a play-by-play, typically you are a team on a bigger hole, people behind the scenes that do so much that um, no one ever sees or 
um, get a lot of love for. And then in general, all of us who are part of MLS, Apple or NWSL, and that's with CBS Sports mm -hmm. uh, rights. So depending on who you're with, right, it's a larger team and you can lean on people that know ins and outs and um, and I hope they feel that I do the same, right? Because a lot of people have a lot of questions and just trying to share information and then you bring that out in your your personality hopefully shines and that's what makes all of us unique, right? So. Yeah, uh, so this is the first time, is this the first time that you're gonna be going to uh, Cincinnati to call a match for any level? Yeah, I'm Midwest through and through. I'm yeah. from Indiana originally. So listen, I'm like, already texting Chris Whittingham actually right before I got on this I'm like we've got to get to Skyline Chili <laughs> yes. um, because you know I've had that growing up my family is going to be jealous but yes it'll be the first time in Cincinnati calling games so I'm pumped we can get you a bottle of St. Elmo's sauce too to take home with you oh, just go, yeah, go to Kroger yeah, and get you a bottle it. let's do it we'll take care of you Lori I I know that uh this is going to be the second time you've seen Philadelphia. Um, what do you make of them so far? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, pro probably not performing at the level that they want to right now, considering the high expectations of how good they were last year and then coming in. And I think, you know, we don't need to rehash about Champions League and, you know, the question marks about that with MLS teams and how that can take its toll, especially early on in the season. And they're going to be playing in Champions League again tomorrow night. So, mm -hmm. um you know, another game, but uh, yeah, I think, you know, it just feels like the team is still kind of trying to find that next level, had a lot of games, it's been a bit of a, some of the unfortunate results. And then some, it just feels like, all right, the three that we saw so dominant last year up top, um, maybe still kind of finding their way, but still look dangerous, still look like they can create chances. It just hasn't been as coming as easily or as seamlessly as I think what we saw last year. But I kind of find this this FC Cincinnati game intriguing. Um, I was just diving into my prep starting tonight. So I was just through the first 45 minutes of Cincinnati's game versus Miami over the weekend. But there are two teams that are really good in counterattack, right? So I think that'll be an interesting how this game opens up. Um, they're direct. So, yeah, I'm pretty pumped about <laughs> this match, and it could be kind of a fun back and forth. Yeah, Lori, I mean, to that point, I mean, you, you kind of – this team, Cincinnati team, made their name in the league last year with their offense, obviously, that dy dynamics attacking front three. But they've been quiet so far, and the story so far for the season has been the defensive – presence between the back three and Obina Wobodo in the middle. So what are you excited about to see uh, more particularly with the Cincinnati side, like how they've been adapting to winning games this year in a way that they've never done before? Yeah, I think it's impressive that, um, you know, that they've been able to, even if the front three, almost like Philadelphia, right, haven't totally found their their scoring touch yet, um, are still like locking things down defensively, we have been good. And then what I'm looking forward to is potentially in this game in particular is like what Acosta could potentially do. Cause I think he has an interesting role and in, um, you know, depending on where he can float around, cause some problems, especially if Philly sends numbers forward, I think he picks up some really good spaces. I know there was some talk in, in the last game about using the width a bit more, but he is one of those guys that could float out wide. I was even just making a, a note that when Wagner gets, Wagner gets higher up the field, there is space to exploit, I think, in that area. And that could be Acosta for sure. So he's somebody that I I really enjoy as a player. But I think that that is, you know, when you think about some of the front runners and getting them going, it's somebody like that that can pull strings and then find that final pass, but then also take off some of the pressure of the two front runners. So, um, yeah, I would say Acosta is somebody that I'm, I, I'm excited about seeing in this game in particular. And not surprising, right? Last thing I'll say is not surprising that um, that a team like FC Cincinnati is continuing to build and finding ways to be more successful without, even if you don't have those three players finding the back end of the net consistently. That's a to me, that's what you build off of, right? And it's a long season, and allow take some of the pressure off of those top goal scorers. Real quick, do you, as a player, do you? when you hear coaches like Pat Newton has been, who has been so in a sense, disappointed with his team's performances and the fact that they're top of the Eastern conference, but can't seem to enjoy the soccer his team is playing. <laughs> yeah. How do you react to that? Yeah. I think it's like, you know, you're all, I mean, I don't know Pat Newton personally, but I think you're kind of like, 
all right, there is some love, but you know that um, some of that could be a little bit for the media. And then, but you also know you're hearing that I'm sure in the, in the locker room as well. But also that I think it just proves that like his standards, right? Like this is where, this is the expectation of the team. This is where we believe that we can get to. And while yes, we're at the top of the Eastern Conference, it's still a long season. It's, it is a grind. And so how, how do we find that next level, right? And even, I think when you look at the players that they have, how do you find that fluidity and that seamlessness that I think that he would expect from this team? So I think, yeah, it's a little bit of like, give them an edge. We're not happy. Let's keep going. Let's keep continue to find another level for ourselves. Uh, I think I have to steer this away from uh, the upcoming game. Just, just briefly, this is Cincinnati soccer talk after all. So uh, <laughs> with uh, your vast knowledge about the, the women's national team, I think we have to talk about, hometown hero, uh, Rose Lavelle. Yeah. Um, and just exactly, I'm curious to get your take on this. How central do you think she'll be in, in Vlatko's plans um, uh, in the upcoming World Cup? And uh, just to, you know, hear from you, what do you like most about her game right now? Yeah. Um, well, I think she's going to be a crucial part. And I think we've seen that, the consistency of him, um, one, in her in the starting lineup and him, showing that um, confidence in her in the starting lineup. But also, I think, just in the general run of play, I mean, it seems like as if that is a focal point, right? Allow Rose to get on the ball and then drive it back lines, draw fouls if not, or play a final pass. So I think that's what I love about her game at this point in time. And I think we're seeing that more consistently is her – you don't see a lot. Of, I mean, I certainly wasn't a midfielder like that. I was like, I was much more of a, a passer, right? I was like, do not let me hold on to this ball more than about three touches, right? And Rose is, is fearless. She wants to pick up the ball. She wants to drive it back lines. She wants to create some chaos in some ways. And I think we're seeing that, I think maybe earlier in her days, there were times when she would just drive and then go for it. And now you're seeing a bit more nuance and understanding of, hey, okay, there's an opportunity. I probably could pick this ball up and go, but I can play a one touch a one touch ball. And we saw that actually in her last game this past weekend against uh, Gotham, it was a, a final pass to Jess Fishock, perfectly weighted. Jess Fishock's able to take it first time. And so I think there's a bit more, uh, I, for lack of a better word, yeah, nuance. And then also just more than just that one dimension of her driving and, and picking up balls deep. But listen, it's, it's difficult to contain and she has a lethal left foot as well. So if you have a couple other midfielders that are able to, you know, keep things behind or, you know, screen behind her, then give her that room to be able to take players on and look to get into the box. So, yeah. yeah it should be a crucial role. Especially with those wingers, um, whoever yeah. it is, you know, as a Washington spirit season ticket holder, I hope it's Trinity Rodman, but you know, it might not be in the cards. <laughs> oh, you're watching, you're watching season ticket. Awesome. I lived in DC for about a decade. So yeah. Audi field yeah. was, uh, yeah, was Trinity's rocking awesome. match week one. And is all, I mean, talk about a, uh, a generational player as well. And like, yep. it's just getting started. Right. Yep. Yeah. And one thing we're hungry for in Cincinnati is, is NWSL and yep. you, you'll see the NWSL to Cincinnati uh, Twitter handles out there. We're always hungry for it. You know, what would your, I don't say sales pitch is probably the wrong word, but what would you say to Jeff Birding or the Cincinnati ownership? If you see them this week about, you know, expansion to, you know, Cincinnati is so soccer hungry. Yeah. I mean, we're selling that every game here, but we are dying for NWSL. And, yeah. and so we can get our girl Rose home, you know? <laughs> no doubt. Uh, I think it, I mean, listen, like, God, the product is, I think women's sport in general, right? Is just, I mean, what the final, the final in, in the championship yesterday, oh, just yeah. bonkers. Like this, the, the desire to consume women's sport is, and it's just getting started. So we're in an incredible opportunity now. And I think, you know, I think, it's, it's a business. I mean, there is money making potential, right? Like no doubt it has, it has not even been tapped into to say the least yet. And I know firsthand about Cincinnati being uh, even like 30 years ago when I was growing up, right. And playing, we'd go to Cincinnati to play in tournaments all the time. It was like one of my favorite places. Cause it's just like, <laughs> yes, this is amazing. People love the game here. And there's so many, that time it was kids, right? Like our teenagers that were playing f f against me, but um, yeah, it's, like you have the facilities, you have the fan base, you women's soccer is on the rise. To me, mm -hmm. having another uh, Midwest team is a no brainer. You have, right. That's in for the most part in like 
can get cold in the winter, no doubt. But like, it's we're not talking about like one of like the northeast teams either. So you can put you in mild temperatures, which is I think is important as well throughout um, the beginning stages of a an NWSL season. But yeah, that'd be my pitch. I mean, yeah. look at the league; it's booming. The last couple of years, I mean, we've have record record sell at crowd. I mean, it's just that people are building stadiums. Kansas City, we were there live this past weekend. They're building a stadium. Their training facilities yeah. are freaking second to none. I mean, there's just the the potential is can't even. I don't even know the word for it. It's awesome. And there's a built-in rivalry. Cincinnati yeah. hates Louisville. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Exactly. Sorry. And that's what we need more of, though. I think that's a good point because we do need more rivalries. Like, come on, let's go. Like, this is we need some of that. Like, more banter. Uh, yeah. So. And what we have, Kansas City, Louisville, and then it would be Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we I think we've already hosted the women twice yep. in TQL Stadium. We uh, hosted them, I believe, once in Nippert, maybe. But yeah, it's 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 amazing, um, and I can't wait to see see what the future is here in, in Cincinnati. Uh, real quick, Lori, uh, before we get you out of here again, first off, thank you again so much for taking time out of your schedule to come and speak to the listeners in Cincinnati. Uh, we've been truly blessed with. Uh, what Apple has been able to bring to us on a week, week by week basis and, and great people like yourself. I mean, it's great that our fans can, I say kind of make a relationship with you guys, but it's kind of what they're doing. Um, so thank you very much for taking time to come here. Um, but before we get, we get out here, do you have any questions for us about Cincinnati or, or, you know, recommendations on pizza. And I think Tyler Terrence asked where, where he should go to dinner. <laughs> of course not. Okay. Listen, I am going to Skyline Chili. We've already know, we already know <laughs> that. Um, what about, um, yeah, two questions about recommendations. Sure. Best coffee and, um, maybe a lunch place because Chris Whittingham Ooh. doesn't get into late on Friday. And he's like, Lord, I don't know if we can go to Skyline before the game. <laughs> so it's like fair. Man. That's fair. So um, yeah, maybe a great lunch place and best coffee in town for sure. Nate, what's the place across the street from Gomez? That's the coffee place or the coffee emporium. The thing, Yeah. I think downtown it's coffee emporium, deeper roots yeah. or collective espresso. Yeah. I don't think you can go wrong at any of those places. Lori, I'm a suburbanite with three kids, so I'm just such a letdown on that coffee right. question. Get, I got coffee important, but we'll have to get those on Twitter. Yeah. Um, so I have those written Ga down for sure. Guys, I, I put on here at Lori, L O R I L I N D S E Y 6. Please tweet at her all your recommendations. Of course, I'm always a big, if you like fried chicken, the Eagle Gomez, yeah. also great places for uh, uh, turtles. So please go check that out, man. It's. Any, again, anywhere within walk, you're going to have 100 places within walking distance of the stadium. I think you'll be really surprised um, the location and how just accessible it is to the entire city. Yeah. If you need a moment, check out Finley Market. Oh, yeah. Finley yeah. Market. Finley Market. Every, every single, food. every food option you could possibly want. Great oh. for lunch. It's great for just the atmosphere alone in that whole area is incredible. So. That sounds a bit like Reading Terminal here in Philadelphia. Yes. So you can go. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Well, I guess um, before we get off, uh, what uh, would you, what do we need to know? Should we be giving any shout outs? What do you want us to know about Cincinnati or even maybe more specifically the FC Cincinnati team that we might not know? Well, guys, I think that's a great question. Um, I think for Cincinnati, it's if, if Obina Wobodo can be healthy for this match, yep. he's such a linchpin um, for this team getting the ball forward. And if he's not there, who's going to step up? We got two really young midfielders. And I think their success or failure is going to lead to the result for FC Cincinnati. Nice. Particularly like what you were saying, like as a midfielder, you'd like to ball, get the ball off your feet quick. Uh, yeah. Bina is very decisive and gets the ball kind of flowing. He's not always, a, I think Nate's broken down tremendously. Uh, he is definitely not a forward passer. Uh, he likes to play it a little bit back, but it's safe. Yeah. It's yeah. playable. It's less. not just being He's a little bit. Less. It's not too crazy and chaotic. I think FC Cincinnati at times likes to uh, get a little creative on attack and that they can uh, be to their own detriment. Yeah. I think I would just flag, we were talking about him before you hopped on, but Alvaro Barrial, um, he'll be listed mm -hmm. as a, a left wing back, um, but don't let that fool you. He'll definitely defend, but he loves to get forward and is often, often will be that kind of third runner in the box um, yeah. for whoever's receiving the ball. Um and I think you'll get to games where that's more evident if you're just through the first 45 of, of the Miami game. Yeah. Um, but he really, uh, especially the, the goal against Nashville, 
Mm -hmm. uh, it's a the drifting cool. side as well it seems yeah. too so he kind of overloads helps with that which will be interesting i think too with the the diamond mm -hmm. in the midfield with philadelphia so there'll be some good matchups in this game we mentioned the one about being transitional but also yeah where does this space open up is one team or another's more aggressive so yeah it should be good i'm excited and obviously good crowds <laughs> so it should be fun Awesome. Well, Lori, thank you again so much, guys. I'll put all of uh, Lori's contact info in our show notes as well as tweet that out on uh, at Cincy Soccer Talk later today. Lori, thank you so much. And uh, I guess we'll listen to you uh, on Saturday. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much. This has been great. And as you mentioned, in terms of us learning the fans and meeting the fans, even though we're there, this is a great way. So thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Thank you, Lori. You have a good one. Yeah, you too. Take care. Thank you. Bye. And that was Lori Lindsay uh, from uh, Apple TV. Tremendous, tremendous uh, uh, personality for the league. Um, I, I love having all these names that we've heard of, we haven't necessarily got to speak to, like Steve Cangelosi last week, now Lori. Just tremendous people, and you listen to them, and and they are first rate. Um, I, you know, unfortunately, I split my season tickets, so I had to stay at home this week, and I thought Steve Cangelosi was tremendous on his call. Of course, uh, Danny H H H Higginbottom and. That was an amazing thing too, but uh, very excited to hear Lori. Yeah, she yeah. was fantastic. I mean, it's it goes to show that Apple put some time in and really didn't just kind of pick whoever you know, like who said yes first. I mean, the personality, <laughs> the personalities that we've I'll seen yes. so far have have been have been great, and they've been so you know obviously willing to come on at our you know our later later hours has been great, but you know willing to learn and wanting to learn and wanting to make you know, make the product better. And I, and I think we've seen, seen that translate a little bit. All right, guys, before we get into our next segment here, let's go back to another one of our tremendous partners. Beyond Exercise is a locally owned physical therapy and fitness facility that helps people prevent and rehab from injuries, improve fitness and athleticism, and recover from strains of daily life. In fact, they've worked with a couple of your FCC starting 11 over the past three off-seasons. Check out their website to see who these players are and to see the range of services they provide to keep you pain-free and moving well at GoBeyondExercise.com. I need to get over there to be on exercise because I just played 30 minutes with my 7, 8, 9-year-olds tonight on training and I wanted to die. So, uh <laughs> Go check out Beyond Exercise, tremendous partner, along with uh, with Apollo Home. Uh, guys, thank you so much for being a great partner to our show. And uh, again, I'll, I'll touch on it a little bit later. But if you would like to support the Cincinnati Soccer Talk, uh, please go over to uh, CincinnatiSoccerTalk.com slash support and uh, be a part of our Patreon. Uh, with that, you get access to our Growler Cup. And we'll talk a little bit about that here uh, later. So, guys... Um, Right as we were talking about it there at the end with uh, with Lori, uh, one of the biggest questions we had this weekend when we saw the team sheet, no Obina Wobodo in the midfield. Of course, you had Marco Angula step into the role. Uh, what did you guys make of that, Nate? We'll throw it over to you first. What did you make of that? And uh, the youngsters feeling admirably, I guess you could say? Yeah, I think there were ups and downs. Um, uh I mean, but at the end of the day, he's he's super young, and that that shouldn't have been a surprise for for anybody watching. That he might come in and uh, you know look great one minute, and then um, under hit a pass and and have to go make a reckless challenge that it was almost a penalty. Seven um, minute var rolling, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, I I think it, it's a it's a work in progress. He will be. Uh, I certainly saw enough to 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 see kind of where the, the front office is and, and, you know, why they, they spent uh, the, the transfer fee that they did and, and brought him in uh, into one of the, the three U 22 slots. I, you can definitely see the upside. Um, I think he would look better if he could be paired next to, next to OB. Um, it's a big ask asking anybody to, to step in and, and be that ball winner and destroyer and really uh, hold the, the game together in transition like OB can. Um, but you know, I'm excited to see the next start uh, and and to see the the growth potential from Marco. Uh, Justin, what was one area of Marco's game that you would wish to see improvement on from this past week? Just don't let uh, mistakes compound. I mean, uh, I think a f I think a few of those 
were a little bit, he was a little bit out of position on some of those plays. I think that uh, some of the balls were forced into him, but to compound that with a, a hard foul, uh, I think um, beckoning back to the one in the midfield where he just completely decleated on a short pass from Ray Gattis, he was kind of out of position a bit. And he should have stretched a little bit wider, kind of opened himself up. Ray Gattis was kind of boxed in. But uh, yeah, I, I think, um, I think I, I, I have to agree with Nate there. I think, um, uh, Ultimately, this is probably an eight in my mind. Uh, I think what we've seen from him, he's very rangy. Uh, he's not afraid to play uh, defensively. Uh, but yeah, I think we, we've kind of seen him in the six and we've kind of seen him in the 10 now. And uh, obviously, very difficult ask. I mean, both games were very miserable conditions. Freezing cold in Chicago. Uh, kind of a, a late scratch with Obina Nwobodo asking him to take over at the six role. So I, I, I think he will settle in at the eight spot for me. Yeah, I, you saw kind of to what Nate was saying, his upside potential. There were some points where it looked like he just didn't have the confidence to make a pass. I think there was like, a, I think a road like, I was say tenth or eleventh minute in when he picked his head up and it, he saw Barrial streaking up the field. He's like, "I think I can hit it. I think I'm not going to make that mistake." So it's one. It's almost like is there coaching there that's telling him to hey, just maybe pull back the reins a little bit. So we'll see what happens. But um, Marco played sixty some odd minutes, did very well. Um, Malik Pinto comes in. Josh, I think another very good showing for an academy uh, player from FC Cincinnati. Yeah, I mean, it's it's only been a couple games in, obviously, but it's not. I don't think it's hard pressed to see like he's the most impressive player, just in terms of what your expectations are of him. He, I would say he's probably one of the most impressive players, just because he's so young and and you really had no idea kind of what you're gonna get out of him. You're throwing a kid really to the wolves when he, get, he gets his first start and he performs admirably and all he's done since there. And we're talking about compounding performances. He's, you know, he's young, he's made some mistakes, but, but he hasn't looked like it's gotten, he's gotten too overwhelmed by the moment of, of being a professional player playing alongside much more experienced professional players. I think, you know, he could be he couldn't be in a better position in terms of being able to watch you know watch and sit behind Obi and Junior Moreno and even have somebody like Angulo next to him who's you know roughly the same age you know looking at that talent he's got that price tag Angulo's got that price tag on him I think his whole surrounding is is going to help him develop in a way that you know is obviously for the future but I think him getting those first team minutes and him getting this early training time, you've seen his confidence skyrocket. And I think that's only going to help him and help this team down the stretch, as we've talked about at nauseum throughout this whole season of how many games they're going to be playing still. He's going to, he's in my mind, in my mind, he's solidified himself as, as a permanent fixture on this first team and he's going to be needed. So, yeah, well, it's also nice. And I think I, I said this earlier in the season that, when you're bringing in these young guys like Marco and, and, and Pinto, that they're not coming into a bad squad. They're coming into a squad that has a lot of experience playing together, a lot of support, a lot of smart players. So you can throw these guys out there in these tough games and they're still a fallback on. Like you saw, Junior Moreno knew who he was playing with this week. Yersin, Nick knew who they were playing with and they could sometimes come up and make plays, sometimes it burn them. But they they did very well, I think, kind of as a whole unit defensively. I thought they played pretty well for a couple times. Uh, transitioning here, we're going to kind of throw this over to Nate real quick. Um, I saw uh, Jose in the chat say Brenner was doing a lot of things on Saturday, shooting, distributing, defending. I was a huge fan of Brenner on the weekend, and I was pissed that he got pulled before Vasquez. So, Nate, I want you to talk me off the ledge on why I'm questioning Pat Noonan's tactics here. And we're still not clicking with that front three yet. You know, what, you you wrote a tremendous piece on Cincinnati's Arc Talk that was released today. Please go check it out. But tell us a little bit about where you think our shortcomings are. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't, I'm not worried about the, the front three. I think the opportunities have been there. Um, I think with the, 
Brenner is, is certainly doing more uh, distributing. He's dropping deeper, and Lutro is is staying a lot higher consistently, um, out of possession, which is which is interesting. Uh, it just gives you know, obviously it, it makes sense. You want your most dynamic player to have the ball in moments of transition. So, and then just by by holding Lucho higher up the field, sure it leaves you a little bit lighter defensively. But Lucho's not doing a, a ton of defensive work to start with. Um, so, like he's in my view uh, almost been more of a forward this year than than he has a, a midfielder um, in a lot of cases. Um, so Brenner is also technically gifted enough to be able to drop yeah. into those spaces, find the ball. And either you know find Lucho forward or find Barial who's making a run up the left or or Brandon Vasquez, um, which leaves him a little bit further back when the ball is actually in the box. So we saw it on on Saturday. Um, I think uh, Brenner's first shot, um, the two runs into the box. So Barial gets the ball kind of on the left side of the of the of the Miami box, looks to play across um, the two runners making so. Uh, Brandon Vasquez is making a back post run and Lucha's is making a front post run and they just didn't time it right. Um, so it gets circulated out to Brenner. And at that point, you know, Lucho and, and Vasquez are both off sides. So he takes a shot from 18 and it doesn't really trouble Drake calendar. Um, but in years past, that might've been Lucho taking that shot. Um, so I think there's a give and take. Um, the roles are kind of changing, but they're more interchangeable. Uh, if that makes sense, um, there's more flexibility, especially between Lucho and Brenner, um, to, to my eye. And um, it's just like something we're going to have to live with. It, it's not Brenner getting kind of the poacher chances. It'll be Brenner being a, a late arriving runner in the box or something um, uh, with Lucho making more kind of goal scoring runs. So let, let's dispel something here then. So this is a lot more of we're seeing a lot of positive things. We are seeing how things are taking shape, but they're just not clicking versus three guys in a transfer contract situations yeah. needing to buy a bottle of tequila and sitting on the <laughs> table and hashing stuff out. Right. At least in it. Yeah. To me, at least. And, and like Nashville was a, a better example. Um, I'm an, until we'll see what happens on Saturday, but until um, proven otherwise, I'm willing to write off Saturday as kind of a, a an outlier. Uh, I was not there in person, obviously, but it looked absolutely miserable in the second half. And <laughs> it was cold and it started raining. Uh, and, you know, everybody was was kind of, uh, we talked about Angulo's um, pass that, that didn't go exactly where he wanted to, that, that led to the near penalty. Ray Gaddis had one where he kind of uh, came inside and, and tried to play a, a pass with his weaker foot, yes, but it didn't roll like he expected to and, and came up short. So I think, um, I think you have... Uh, some guys who are, I mean, I think everybody just was just a little bit off. But, uh, I think Pat talked about that, um, that nothing was really clicking. Um, but they were really dangerous in transition against Nashville, especially up a goal. Um, Brenner didn't take his chances, but uh, I would expect he will take his chances in the future. And same with same with uh, Vasquez. Um, to me, at least, getting into those spots where you can take a good shot is the most important thing. Um, rather than some sort of like mythical, he's a really good finisher kind of thing. Um, I, I'll take a striker who can get in, like get into the box and, and take shots over somebody who, you know, will hit a, a banger from 22 yards out in every four games, not four games, every 10 games. Yep. All right, guys. Well, uh, again, if you like what Nate's talking about, he's a lot of metrics some graphs, uh, a very eloquent, um, uh, piece written uh, on Cincinnati Soccer Talk this week, so go check it out. Something that is clicking, gentlemen, Josh, the defense, baby. Another shutout. I wouldn't say our goalie's, you know, having to do a ton, but, you know, he, he is making saves when he needs to, but uh, two names, and, and I guess you could add Nikki Hags too, but Matt Miazga and Yerson Mascara, just, dare I say, the class of MLS right now? I mean, I don't... Obviously, I'm a little biased, but I think Matt Biasca is is an MLS best 11 center defender right now. I mean, I rewatched that game today, and you know, I didn't it just he was so stout in the moments that he had to be, and you didn't really notice. Like he just he shut out chances that were you know a half a step away from being a real threat. Like he snuffed out a threat bef just before it became an actual threat. Like he, it was the, like one of the, it was an incredible performance. And I, and 
it was always calm. Like it was, there was never a panic. And, you know, he made a couple great late arriving, you know, cutting out a cross when he needed to, if Mus when Muscara would get caught out and if he's trying to chase down, you know, recovering from Barriel's side or whatever. But I, I think, you know, I almost made this my best of like, you, this needs almost as critical as Lucho Acosta's the offense that we've seen. Matt Miaska is as crucial to the central defense as, as I think there could be a player right now. Just the way that he has a, taken over that 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 hub role, that quarterback role of the central defense, that he just kind of keeps everything in order, keeps everything in check. He knows when to rotate over. If he sees Mascara getting too high, or if he sees, you know, Nick Haglin scrambling back to try to cover a side too, he's just he's just there, and and it always seems calm. He always seems to be directing guys, and I. I I think you have to look at the results. They speak for themselves. I mean, how another shutout and like, I mean, you mentioned it, you know, you don't have to do, you know, keepers don't have to do a whole lot in the last couple of games, but it's important for them to make the saves when they're called upon. But it's a credit to that defense that he doesn't have to do much. And and it starts, it starts with Matt Miazga. And, and I couldn't be more thrilled that he's the center back of our, of our team. Yeah. It's been kind of a, uh, Every week reoccurring, you know, I'm just waiting to see what happens. And when you have such a potent attack that Philadelphia has this week, we'll see who they rotate with with uh, the midweek versus Atlas uh, in Champions League. But um, I think this will be their big test um, for for really if, if that if we are as good as we think we are. I mean, it's a big another big prove it game early on in 2023 uh before we get to our, our next segment guys i do want to give a shout out to uh, all of our supporters again cincinnati soccer talk is uh for the most part fan uh funded supporter funded so uh we really do appreciate all you guys do um to help us get new equipment our streaming service uh if you guys haven't checked out our wonderful photographers our match writers that we have uh, every week uh, we've truly um Truly been great. Uh, so I hope you guys appreciate all the content coming to you. So uh, real quick, uh, uh, shout out to our supporters. Uh, Red Lee, John Davidson, uh, uh, Rar, a dinosaur roar, Robert Stevens, Laurel Failer, Matt Adamchick, Riley Stephen Burke, James Denbo, Tom Niehouse, Brian Giles, Dan Albers, Will Kajcek, Ian Rex Road, Carl Feit, Christina Schwarma, Kyle Pohl, Rupesh, Tom Beversdorf, Super Average Jason, John, John Haskell, Ryan Ernest, Mary Lou, West Anastasi, Rob Pierce, Clifford Adams, Thomas Spieth, Pierce Johnston, Mike Prentice, David Viederhold, Rob Grissel, Brad Weigel, Kevin L. Day, Paul Hedker, Jamie Smed, Alex Carnegas, Dave Tengler, Patrick Lonnie, Mike Bowman, Brett Silva, Chris Hubbard, Kevin Cooney, Joe Max, Jack Emery, Sarah Gorman, David Moore, Bob Ryan, Ryan Durkin, Bart Labita, Rob Triple, Joe Laurie, Bill Leopold, Maureen H. Day Murray, Jose Guerra, David Myers, John Caffardi, Olympico, Joseph of Hanger 937, Justin Blair, Kyle Phillips, Ashley Niehaus, Dan Burns, Tyler Nolan, Coach Clip, Justin Gregory, and Scott Dalton. If I forgot any names, I copy and pasted from my thought was the most recent list. So blame Boston. He's in Vegas. Have fun, buddy. Take a shot of... Uh, I don't know, tequila or something expensive for me. So guys go. Thank you to Cincinnati slash support for all you do. All right, guys, some uh, miscellaneous thoughts uh, before we close out our show here, Justin, we got money bags, Brandon Vasquez here, man. He's being, he's being linked to, uh, I think this week it was by the sun, maybe by Byron Leverkusen. And then now you have uh, the athletic reporting today that now Hoffenheim and Everton are in bids for the star striker. What do you think about this, man? Some some good teams in for, for our guy, Brandon. Uh, getting a little nervous about this summer. I'm not nervous at all. I think um, it's... At least it's, it's not Aston Villa. It, it, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about that one. Um, yeah, I, I think that... Um, I think he's in good company there. I think these teams aren't necessarily, I guess begging for the top of the table uh, for the most part. Um, uh, if the, if the, if the price is right, I think Brandon Vasquez has shown some aptitude to want to leave and go to Europe, but I think he's also enjoyed his time. So I think uh, 
we're, we're, we're a bit in a, f- a fortunate situation to where I think he uh, is going to make the move whenever he feels comfortable with the move. But I, I think it's in the cards at, at this point. I, I don't think that all these shouts and stuff like that, I'm not saying the summer, but I think the move is coming, if not uh, at the end of the season, but uh, maybe maybe in the summer. But I think these are some good clubs. Obviously, it's getting a lot of attention. But like I said, Brandon's comfortable where he's at. He'll make the right decision when it comes time. Yeah, I think I think if he, I mean Brandon has said that his dream is to play in Europe, um, and I don't think he would have re-upped last year on a new contract if those discussions hadn't already taken place. So I'm sure he has some idea of what, what the value of the bid needs to be for him to be able to go. Um, clearly it's not 7 million, which, uh, which um, uh, Chivas offered um, in the off season. Uh, I don't know how much bigger it is than that. Um, but uh, I think I'm, I'm sure the, the, there is dialogue between Chris Albright and Brendan Vasquez's people and Brendan Vasquez about kind of his future. Um, so yes, I, I agree with Justin. I think he will be probably on the move at some point. I don't know if it'll be the summer. I think this winter probably makes more sense. Um, but uh, I will be enjoying, you know, all the time we have watching him. It, it, and again, if you're, if you're still kind of just learning major league soccer and FC Cincinnati, you're tuning to us as a newer listener. It's very common for um, MLS players to be purchased in the summer by a European club and then loan back to finish out the season. And and you know, never know how that what's going to happen. Um, he might have put his shooting boots on, get called up to the U.S. Men's National Team, and uh, thirty million dollars later, you, you you never know what's going to happen. I can't imagine he's that expensive. But hey, uh, attackers and attackers that can put the ball in the back of net are. Um, very valuable. So we'll see what happens. Um, and he might not be the only guy moving on. Uh, so we'll see what happens uh, on another purchase or sell, we'll say. Um, closing another page in the chapter that was Gerard Nijkamp, uh, winger Isaac Atanga, who we purchased for $4 million from FC Nord Lind. We'll call that because it's in Denmark and there's a lot of letters that I don't know how to pronounce. Uh, he was also sold to uh, Allison's FK in Norway for $300,000. So I hope there's a really good accountant out there, Boston Razzle Dazzle Brazzle, that can explain to me how you can write down that asset on a tax sheet. But um, the ownership of FC Cincinnati is taking a hefty loss on a player that, let's just say, didn't really mesh and was caught in a a change. Josh, what do you make uh, uh, about um, Isaac Atanga moving uh, away from FC Cincinnati? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's always a bummer to see, you know, some, that kind of investment not pan out. Um, you know, it's, if you read the, you know, hear things, whatever he, he was, you know, missing home and not feeling, you know, his best. And so in those situations, obviously it's great to, to let, let somebody like that get closer to home and to feel more comfortable in an environment that, that, they can succeed in and you know good on ownership for for you know just just taking that one taking that punch on the chin and and moving on because you know if you're if you're trying to i mean think of it on a bigger scale they're gonna be looking at a, a, a brenner transfer that you've already seen kind of flirt with the idea of like well they want to recoup their investment you can only take so many you know 300 3.7 million dollar losses before things become an issue. So I think that's going to, you know, could come in and, and ramp things up with Brenner in terms of, of holding their ground there. But, but yeah, I mean, it's, he, he never panned out. It, it was a, it was a different uh, team then when the, when they bought him and you're not gonna, un- well, I shouldn't say you're not going to hit all of them. Chris Albright seems to be uh, challenging the fact that you might not hit every transfer that you make because I don't think he's missed yet. But yeah. if yeah. Josh jinx us, we're throwing him out. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> no, talking my way out of it. No, you but, yeah, you you can't atone for your, the sins of your father. I mean, the previous staff it was the previous staff. It shouldn't make decisions on um, trying to recoup losses unless it's important to the ownership group, obviously. But yeah, you, you just got to clean a roster spot and move on. If I'm Chris yeah. Albright, I'll oh, sorry, go ahead, Nate. I was just going to say, and a U22 slot. Yes. That. Yeah, so, that's, that's huge. Um, that's a huge roster. More flexibility roster. for the summer. 
Um, but before, yeah, I, you know, wish Isaac Tonga the best and, you mm-hmm. know, it didn't work out here and hopefully he will find more, more luck and, um, can kick on as they say in, in back in Scandinavia. Yeah. We need it. You know, FC Cincinnati fans are going to be behind it. <laughs> Regardless of performance, I think I, there was lots of people watching uh, Jurgen Lukadia uh, play. And uh, so it, yeah. FCC fans are going to be behind you no matter what. Da- David stole my thunder here. David Moore uh, listening or watching on Facebook said, uh, but we got Brandon Vasquez for 250K and we'll sell him for 100 million or 10 million. 100 million would be nice. 10 million. So we'll move some of that money around. So 200. I'll- also 250k and not real money yeah, 250K yeah. Damn, right? yeah. so yeah. it's like it's all profit oh, except okay. for the wages but you know Did they divvy that cash out when like you pass go or is it like when they go to jail I, <laughs> wrong game sorry uh all right guys uh i think i we mentioned it a little bit earlier i know we had our notes here for the show is of, of course if, if you have the ability tuesday night uh, philadelphia is playing atlas in the CONCACAF Champions League. So that is the former home of Lucho Acosta. Lucho departed uh, Atlas, and they got good. So, uh, yeah, let's root for those guys to uh, go studs up a couple times against Philly and and help us out this week. So it's a joke. I never wish harm among anybody. Um, I'm a ginger, so I have no soul, so I'm not afraid of saying stuff like that. All right, guys. um, I appreciate you guys joining us again for uh, another great episode of Cincinnati Soccer Talk uh, Boston. We'll be back shortly, so you guys don't have to worry about me. Uh, one thing I did see this week, um, I'll give this as my final thought because I'm not very serious today, um, that a lot of our fans are starting to get pretty clever around TQL Stadium. Of course, uh, now they have the interchangeable stickers for DOS boots, so you can't rip off stuff, but... Um, my buddy here, M.I., says, uh, Brian, we need to establish a precedent about the Sky Rosa. So I'm having my family come into town from Germany, and I'm absolutely feeding them a Sky Rosa. And I cannot wait to see. So Sky Rosa, you have your, you know, I don't know, is it extra cheese, extra pepperoni, La Rosa's pizza. Put a cheese coney on top. Guys, from what M.I. says here, unquestionably, in his mind, is the Coney cheese side up or cheese side down. There's some, some big debates about this. Pat Brennan online guys, any, any feedback? Uh, if, if I had to do it, I would do it down to try to cheese side up. She said up down. You got to get it up. some way, man. No, I don't think it's you know, shooting your face. Would a sky Rosa with the, the, the cheese side down. Would that be a sandwich? <laughs> oh my God. You're just blowing my mind. Nate. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> blowing my mind on Cincinnati soccer talk. Nate Gilman, everybody. All right, Josh, thank you for joining us, man. What's your final thought for the evening? Yeah. So, um, I'm just going to go ahead and you know how you, I'm, I'm, you know, well-versed in law. I'm, I'm, you know, I dabbled, uh, you know, I'm going to say this on a podcast. So that means it's trademark to ours, right? That's how that works. <laughs> say it on a podcast. It's intellectual property. You know, that's fine. Um, and you, it's kind of ironic that you were talking about a coincidental, I should say about, uh, you talking about being a jinx because, you know, they are, we have, we have the perfect season so far and I have no reason to believe that this perfect season will end ever. So I'm going to go ahead and trademark the shirts, print them, get Cincy shirts on the line. Cause, um, the insensibles merch is going to be flying off the shelves at the end of 2023 season, insensibles. insensibles. Okay, it was right there the whole time, guys. I think we got to get Justin Hoyt a part of this somehow. Invin- he's an invincible, so yeah, I think we can do that. I think You're we can welcome, do that. <laughs> guys. Go check out uh, Coach's Talking Tactics uh, with Coach Goff and Justin Hoyt weekly. I think Coach is in Death Valley this week, which is kind of awesome and weird at the same time. But uh, who vacations there? Um, so hopefully he makes it back. So go check out their show whenever he does return, hopefully. And then also go check out um, uh, Jersey Swap with uh, with Jeff Tebbets. I'm, I think he's talking to a couple of Philly guys this week. I know I'm going to go on a Philly uh, podcast Thursday night. So guys, go check that out. Justin, final thought? Uh, besides, uh, I'm wondering if you have enough Tums for your uh, <laughs> your family coming in nope. after the Sky Roses. <laughs> but, um, I was just saying... Um, 
obviously we've talked about it multiple times. Louisville um, City is our biggest rival, uh, FC Cincinnati. <laughs> Debatable, I know. But uh, yeah, check them out this week. Uh, they're playing Lexington SC, uh, a new franchise. They're playing in the uh, uh, U.S. Open Cup round two. So, Where's the game at? Uh, Louisville, <laughs> okay. not, not Georgetown, Kentucky. Yeah, they're they're definitely gonna play it in that nice, pretty stadium they got over there. So, uh, yeah, David versus Goliath, uh, USL champion, uh, championship or uh, championship, sorry, versus a League One opponent, expansion club. So check them out. They just dropped those new home kits. They look nice. I like that green. Yeah. Green and white. Lexington like kits are. Oh, I was I was like, when is Louisville green? Oh, you oh, well, threw me off there, big guy. All right. Nate, what's your final thought, my man? Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, you know, I, I mentioned at the top of the show that it's spring here, and I got to go to my first live soccer game of the year, and it was great. Uh, so hopefully everybody who um, has the opportunity to watch professional or semi-pro or whatever level of soccer um, they can uh, wherever they live uh, does that because it's really fun and cool. To, to harken back on that, uh, if you have the ability or are going down to the stadium this weekend, please, please, please get down there early. Join the march. Set the tone. This is a big game. Doesn't mean non-rivalry games or frenemy games. I mean, yeah, it's not Columbus, but this is a huge game. There's a lot of eyes on it, and um, FCC can use all the help. Uh, the, the Incline Collective, the Knights of the Bailey have done tremendous work tremendous work this season in and honestly let's just say they rebuilt the club supporters groups in in the past year or two after covid and and it is back to fortress nippert and uh please let's get the whole stadium involved in it this week so if you have the ability I, to get there yeah can ahead. i just say uh, i was lucky enough to be able to cover the the fcc philly playoff game for cst so i was in the press box um and when philly scored their game winner uh, the press box literally shook. So bring that sort of energy to TQL if you can be there on Saturday. All right, let's make the, the press box shake. That that See, Josh, you need to make those T-shirts. Make the press box shake. We can do All that, right? right? We can I'll make a right. call. We're going to put the printer in your office, and then we'll have one in Jason Ascraft next to the poison turtle lizard thingies. <laughs> Jeez. Stuff that comes through my head, boys. It's not just me and Boston right. are unique. All right, guys. So thank you very much for checking out Cincinnati Soccer Talk this weekend. We've got a lot of, a lot of content coming for you this week. Please head over to uh, CincinnatiSoccerTalk.com. Download, rate, review. Please give us a like. Share it with your friends. Give us a a review on Apple because that's how a lot of new people find us. And, you know, with uh, people now not paying, paying for blue check marks, um, we don't have any intention of doing that. So we really need your help to spread the word of Cincinnati Sock Talk. Spread the gospel, y'all. And uh, I guess, am I going to say watch your tackles? We'll see you next week.